Hello and welcome. In this session, we will see some methods how to organize yourself when you begin to write. We will talk about two important methods which is storyboarding and to do it in multipass. In a separate lecture, we have shown what the scientific method is. Scientific method to recapitulate is essentially a sequence of steps followed in a cycle. You begin with an observation from which you draw a question. You go to the literature and find out some way to solve the problem and come up with a hypothesis. And then you show it using an experiment or a theory which forms the prediction and test. Now, how is this related to what you write? When you write, we have shown in a separate lecture that the essence of technical communication can be summarized by two statements. One is a question and other is an answer. The question again we have shown in a separate lecture that is structured as a topic, question and significance and an answer has a claim, reason and evidence. Now, how is this related to what you write? The question is essentially the same question that we discuss in the scientific method. Now, based on the literature, you come up with certain possible reasons that or some principles that lead you to a hypothesis. So, the literature or the some existing previously existing knowledge is what gives you a reason to think of certain claim. So, the hypothesis that you come up with is essentially the claim of your answer which answers this question based on the reason. And finally, you have shown that this is true and that forms your material evidence as part of an answer. Now, when do you begin to write? Do you write after you completed the work, after everything is clear? Not really. You need to plan to write and you plan to write even before you begin to work. Why is it important to plan to write before you begin to work? Because it guides you on what to do tomorrow, what to do next week and next month. So, you start off with proposing tentative solutions. So, tentative solutions are hypothesis, tentative hypothesis or working answers as they are called. You write down your answers in full detail, why you think this is possible and what evidence you need to gather to support this claim. It may be set of experiments or set of solutions of equations or set of simulations or so on. It is very important that you do not get infatuated by the working hypothesis. Keep in mind this is just a working hypothesis and whether it is true or not depends on the outcome of the experiments that you are going to do. It could very well be wrong. If you do not have a working hypothesis, simply modify your question so that you can get something, some tentative answer to work on. Propose this answer to your working group or to your supervisor and then modify the answer or the steps of evidence that you need to gather. Now, when you start to solve a problem, you will necessarily not have one hypothesis, you may have many. You may have many claims and many possible hypotheses and to organize them and to work with each of them, we build what is known as a storyboard. Storyboard is something that is typically used in motion pictures. In motion pictures, there is a story and there is a way the story is presented to the audience using a screenplay, which comes first, which comes next, 
that is dependent completely on the story on the screenplay. Similarly, when you write scientific article or a technical work, it need not necessarily follow one chronological sequence. You could arrange them in different way. Each is a unit of information, but you could present them in different order. So, the method I am going to discuss now is discussed in detail in this book by Booth. It is a very useful book, particularly if you are interested to write well. It is available in India and costs only about 500 rupees. Okay, let us look at the storyboard. The storyboard is essentially a set of cards. There is a title card which is the topic, then there is the question, the research question. Now, for the research question, you could have multiple claims or multiple hypotheses, which I number as 1, 2 and 3. Now, for each hypothesis, you have used your literature to find a reason that it, why it is true. Now, if this hypothesis is true, what is the prediction or the, what is the evidence that you need to gather to show that it is true? Remember, we are doing all of this before even we start to work. This is going to provide us a way to work. This is going to provide us to plan to work. Now, repeat the same thing for each of this hypothesis. Hypothesis 1, you have a card which contains reason and possible evidence. Hypothesis 2 is reason or a guess reason and what is the possible evidence. Similarly, for hypothesis 3. Remember, you have not done any of these things, you have not started to work also. So, you call them as possible evidence and the reason you call it as a guess. Now, let us say you have completed the work after 5 months, 6 months, 1 year, 5 years. After that, when you are sure of evidence, the evidence has either proved the hypothesis right or wrong, then your tentative answer which you started off as hypothesis becomes your claim. The claim of claim or the final thesis of this question. Similarly, a guess which you started off before the work began, it becomes a reason. And finally, the possible evidences that you wanted to gather now becomes the final material evidence that you need to support your answer. How do you plan to write an argument? Now, recall that the answer has got three parts, claim, reason and evidence. So, for each of them, you write down possible questions or objections that the readers can raise. There could be several questions inside the argument. For example, reasons could be inconsistent, they could be contradictory or they might be weak or irrelevant. Evidence can be unreliable, can be inaccurate or insufficient. You must talk to your colleagues, friends and advisor to object against each of these reasons and evidence. Now, once you have got the broad picture there, you come back and start with the working introduction. Introduction is written twice. The first one is called as a working introduction, which is a very sketchy way to write the whole paper. It is simply to guide your own writing. And finally, once you have completed the entire article, you need to rewrite the introduction for your readers. Remember, when you did the first pass reading, you only read the title, abstract, introduction and conclusion. Similarly, you would expect that your readers first read the abstract, introduction and then conclusion. So, it is very essential that you bring out the gist of the paper in abstract and introduction. So, first you use a sketchy one for your own writing, then a final one for your readers. What do you write in your introduction? Very importantly, you need to write the current situation, what your readers think or know with their current knowledge. Essentially, it is a gist of what the literature says and then that gives you motivation to provide 
your work. And then you say the question. The question has to be a disruptive statement. We know all these things, but we do not know this. We know that this works like this, but in some other situations it changes. So, you are using this, but you are actually using a disruptive statement, what we do not understand. And final part of your introduction should answer the question, so what if we do not do this problem? That is a question that your reader will ask. After going through the first part, the reader might ask, why should I do this? Why should I read your paper? And you preempt that and you put it in your work saying that this is important because of this and that becomes a significance. And then you could also briefly state your primary claim part of the introduction without actually revealing the thrill and uh, the final conclusion. Now, keywords are very important part of the paper of or any article. Keyword actually unites the article. Now, it is very important that the keywords are repeated in the title, abstract, introduction, results and conclusions. It is because these sections are read first. How do you get the keywords? You could get the keywords from your claim. Go back to your storyboard and circle words from your claim and use the same set of keywords everywhere. Do not use variations. You might have two words which mean the same in your area of work, but that much only possibly you know. When a new reader reads it, they may think that it is two different topics that you are discussing in the paper, while to you it is the same. So, make sure that you use the same set of keywords everywhere, even though they have alternate meanings. You may write them in brackets if you want. For every reason, you use one keyword at least. So, people are know that you are relating the claim to your evidence through this reason. Now, once you have finished completely writing the paper, you need to rewrite the introduction. Now, this rewriting introduction is for your readers. You need to expand the current literature. You may also use certain hypothesis which you rejected, because you rejected the hypothesis because the evidence failed. And it is very important to include negative results such as this, because if you could think of it, there could be many others who could think of it as a first guess and you do not want others to be repeating the same thing. So, it is very important that you use negative results and you might state it like this. It may be expected that, but we did this and found that it did not work. You could rewrite the keywords if you wish, but change it consistently throughout the paper. And finally, write the conclusion, restate the claim and then briefly state the reasons and evidences that you have gathered to support your claim. Again, ensure the keywords are used. You might want to state a kind of future significance. Is there a new significance or new practical application that has come because of the results that you have found in this paper? State it. And finally, you should write the title last. Title is the first thing that everybody reads and title is the last thing that you write, because it should clearly summarize whatever you have written. I have taken most of this material from two very nice books on writing. One is by Kate et al and other is by Booth et al. Both are from Chicago and they are known for their work in the Chicago Manual of Style. Thank you for listening.